Welcome. My name is Arthelaine Rippey, and I know we have a lot of really faithful viewers out there, but we got a lot of new ones today. I certainly believe that. I want everybody to feel welcome. Uh, we've been around for a long time on television and truly believe that the home is really that basic foundation that God himself created. And it's crumbling, crumbling, we know that. And so that's the reason that uh, we exist today. And we try, we just try to deal with anything and everything that affects the home. And of course, one of the major, major things that would affect the home is your health, your physical health. And today I am delighted that I will present to you two medical doctors, Dr. Bill Hamaspar and Dr. John Young, uh, who you regular viewers know for sure who he is. It's one of the most interesting conversations you will ever, ever hear. And as I was interviewing them, I just kind of sat back and let them talk back and forth and you can learn a lot. You can learn a lot from this program today. And I strongly suggest that you would um, try to take the time to listen and pay attention to what they have to say. Uh, they are medical doctors, but also uh, very much into healthy things that you take into your body instead of multitudes of pharmaceuticals. So I hope you'll really take advantage of this. It, it's a very solid opportunity. And I'm going to join Stephanie in the kitchen. We're making, get this, skinny chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Now that means that they've probably tried to bring the calories down in it and I'm very suspicious. I love Alfredo sauce and try to stay away from it. So this one is supposed to be a little bit kinder, you know, to your hips and all those things uh, that fettuccine can really affect. So I'm going to join Stephanie and um, after we fix this wonderful meal for you, um, you will see and hear the conversation I had with Dr. Bill Hemisfar and Dr. John Young. So I'm going to join Stephanie right now. And uh, we got the address and phone number up for homekeepers right now. If you want to take note of that and contact us at all, um, we would be glad to hear from you. I've joined Stephanie over here, and I'm smelling garlic. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Smells good, doesn't it? So I just have some um, olive oil mm -hmm. in here, and I put some chopped up garlic. We're just going to saute that for a second. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to put some flour in here. This will be the thickening agent. Mm -hmm. And it says you can use um, kefir, or we're using yogurt. Yeah, okay. and I never heard of kefir. Had mm -hmm. you? I hadn't. I had to look it up. Yeah? Yeah. Well, Susan, who works with us mm -hmm. uh, she she takes she likes it a lot oh really so I guess it's uh, maybe a companion of yogurt only better mm -hmm. better for you yes okay so I'm just gonna saute the flour up oh okay. you want to um, do a little chop in there well we're, I'm supposed to make ribbons oh basil okay. ribbons. well good luck well you know Stephanie <laughs> uh, a show we did recently with my daughter and her friend Diana and they had been through really rough times, one a plane crash and one a um, cancer. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how wonderfully their husbands took care of them through that time. I mean, hands on. Wow. And I was wondering, who, who do you want around if you really need somebody to take care of you? Oh, my husband, for sure. He He'd be a good one. Care. Yeah, he would get, take good care of me. This is chicken broth that yeah. I'm whisking in. Anybody else? Um, of course, my mother, mm -hmm. you know, and she was a nurse, so. Oh. She takes care of business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was having Alexis, I was having some complications, and the doctor said, oh, we're going to wait a little while. And she was like, um, no, you said, <laughs> and we're going to take care of it right now. And he was like, well, all righty, then we're going to take care of it yeah. right now. <laughs> well, you know, they induce labor on Meredith, and so I said to the doctor, it was 9 o'clock in the morning, I said, when do you think the baby will arrive? He said, around five. And I said, well, you need to know something, that both her grandmother and her mother dilate like lightning. <laughs> you really need to be. <laughs> and he looked at me like, you're crazy. I am the doctor. Yes, yes. He, that's the look he gave me, like, yep. what medical school did you go to? Yeah. That, and so around noon, I had stepped out from my come in. The baby was there. And he didn't even get to go back to his office. Oh, my gosh. See, did you and say so, I told you so? 
this no, is he, the Parmesan cheese. He, uh, he said the family tradition has been upheld, <laughs> so he admitted it. Okay, that was Parmesan cheese. Okay. Man, this is nice and thick. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna put some yogurt in. It's just plain yogurt. Yeah, but the recipe says kefir, so maybe we've educated a lot of other yeah, people here. Yeah. All right. So, that, so that's one of the ways where the um, the calories are. It's not cream. It's not mm -hmm. heavy whipping cream. It's yogurt. I'm gonna put a little salt yeah, and a little pepper. Yeah, and this doesn't have a, a ton of um, butter or cream in it. Right, right. Yeah, I think this is gonna be good for you. Do you know what I've learned though? I love pasta. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to take just a little tiny bit when I'm home yes. and put a whole bunch of vegetables with yes, it. Yes, that's a good idea. But just, I use just about a fourth of a cup. That's the truth of pasta. Wow, gosh. If you saw how I ate my dad's <laughs> spaghetti, it's like I have it piled high. Right. Now, should we put this on the plate? Put that on the plate, yep. Okay. Because this is our, see how fast that was? This is already uh -huh. done. Did you put Crazy. the chicken in there? You're, they say put it on top. We can put it in here if I we want to. I put it to. in. Okay, go ahead, because it's a lot more than I thought. Thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, we might have gone overboard on this. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is going to be really, really good. All right. Because uh, we got to we gotta get out of the way for the doctors. And then these are the ribbons. Of oh, you made ba basil ribbons. Fresh basil. Oh, nice. wow. That was really fast. That, um, yeah. That's a nice, quick, easy meal. And that was rotisserie chicken. That yes, you had, that was. You just uh, got the a rotisserie chicken. The recipe says chicken, uh, grilled and you just got a rotisserie chicken and shredded it yeah super easy mm -hmm. super easy dinner night okay well we know this is going to be good but i know good and get well. a good flavor get a good chunk I know of it, but chicken we, and uh. do it do it come on <gasps> mm. oh my is that good surprisingly good good surprisingly good it's very rich okay it looks really good it's called skinny chicken fettuccine fettuccine alfredo mm -hmm. sauce and and yummy and i've got my hands dirty <laughs> and my mouth is full <laughs> my mother would be so mad <laughs> but if you want this recipe email us write us we'll get it right out to you now i want you to hear the two doctors hemisphere and young you'll enjoy it If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. gentlemen I kind of feel like I'm a student that's just <laughs> privately tutored when I'm with you gentlemen and and our wonderful viewers can you know learn from what we're trying to discuss welcome back um, thank you uh, Dr. Hammersfar and uh, Dr. Young we're offering a new product from uh, Young Health and I'm going to rely on you to kind of uh, tell us what it's called electrolytes a bottle right. of it looks like water to me um, Basically this, the American public is drinking a ton of water and it's usually my water's better than yours because it's been triple purified and all of that. So we've taken the minerals out. The minerals in our food supply, the minerals were, I mean, they were gone 50 years ago. Uh, that's why the fruit looks great but tastes like nothing. So that's we're very right. mineral deficient. And so what we realized is, at least with my patients, I need to get some electrolytes in because we're dealing with the electricity, dealing with the cell, cell membrane, and its electrical charges. And so uh, we came up, we worked with Mark Schaus out of uh, Nevada and developed an electrolyte solution that has worked just great for us. And uh, that's why my patients, once I got the electrolytes kind of balanced in them, they also felt better. So it's part of the overall health. You need the proteins, you need the oils, you need the electrolytes, and it's And it's we're amazing. offering that today <coughs> for a, a wonderful offer of uh, $22.95. And uh, you can see that, uh, that bottle there on your screen. Now, okay, so I've got a bottle of this. I, I understand I just put a tablespoon, a tablespoon. in what? About 8 Anything? to 12 ounces of water, juice, milk, whatever. 
I drink distilled water. I really need that, right? You definitely need that. You yeah. definitely need okay. that. And Bill has a great story on this whole distilled water thing that he's got to talk about. Oh, okay. Well, one of our patients, well, not one of our patients, but one of the people here in the Tampa Bay area a few years ago died from drinking distilled water. And what? essentially, they drank it for about a year because it, there's a real problem with heavy metals and organic pesticides in the U.S. water supply. So they essentially switch over to distilled water, thinking that yeah. it would help wash out and flush that out would toxins. Be me. And they died. They well, died of thank seizures. Thank you very much. Yeah. What happened was it flushed out all the electrolytes in their system, and they developed seizures and died. Um, you have to have the electrolytes inside the system. So the distilled water is okay if I put the. And that's fine, yeah. But you have to have the electrolytes in. When I went to um, training at Northwestern, we were one of the schools that uh, was involved in setting the new cardiac guidelines for salt intake back in the 70s. I was there in the 70s. And I was a student wandering around with all the cardiologists. And the goal, we're, we're in one of the universities that were setting the, the national guidelines. So the goal of the cardiologists was to decrease salt intake in the U.S. population by 10%. So they went around to everybody, all their patients and said, stop 10% of the salt. Well, that didn't work. So then they said, stop 50%. And, you know, nobody thinks about 50%, so that didn't work either. So then they just said, cut it all out, figuring that would cut down salt intake by 10%, which it sort of did. But now as a neurologist, I see people who really did cut out the salt 30 years ago and 40 years ago now having salt deficiency syndromes. And what does that cause? It causes all sorts of things, dementia, balance problems, memory problems, heart attacks. Uh, it, it can lead to tremors. It can lead to seizures. It can lead to strokes. It can cause lots of different disabilities. Weakness is a, a major problem with that too, as well as blood pressure changes, which blood pressure changes give you heart changes and give you kidney changes and give you retinopathy and contribute to macular degeneration. So when you start to like This look, is a lack of salt? This is one of the contributing causes in many people. And it's with a lot of my patients, probably 25%, I have to add, have them add salt to their food. And, and we're always getting the message, you know, I mean, that mo yeah. mayor in New York wanted mm -hmm. to remove all the salt shakers from the restaurant. Right. Bad idea. Really bad <laughs> idea. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hemisford is so um, interested in the brain, and I am too. I think I mentioned the last time you were here that I had a brother-in-law with Parkinson's mm -hmm. and my mother, uh, really severe dementia. I'll tell you something, though, real quick. Um, she kind of sat like this all day uh, the last few, uh, last year or more of her life. But she had a great, great granddaughter born on her birthday, on her 100th birthday. Oh, cool. And so my son and his daughter, they all wanted a picture with the baby with her. So here's my mother in this wheelchair, and I was concerned for her to hold a baby. We put the baby in her lap, and boy, she came alive. Sure. I just wonder, when we get into that kind of medication or that kind of medicine, Give him a puppy, give him a, yeah. a kitty cat, give him a baby. She, it was just amazing. And I think we've made the whole thing so narrow. There's just so many things that can make yeah, that part of the spirit, you know. But a lot of that occurs with hormonal shifts in the body. When you have that immediate change, that cortisol shifts and other things, and that changes nerve transmission inside the brain, inside the spinal cord. Um, and we were talking in an earlier show about that there are four, four uh, supports to good health, being, one being nutrition, one being the blood flow to the body. Um, another one of them is the hormonal balances. And that sort of immediate response is based on the hormones suddenly coming up closer to normal level that allows the nervous system and the body to react normally. Now you, you have a, what you call a four-legged stool, which right. you just kind of went over, right? The uh, supplementation, mm -hmm. the min minerals and all that exercise, digestion, I never thought of digestion as uh, something that's really pertinent to your huge health. Huge problem in people over the age of 60 is, is and right over earlier too, but you, you develop the diseases when you're over 60 from deficiencies and problems that start when you're 30s and 20s. Uh, and one of the big problems we have is, is absorption of the proper uh, foods and the proper minerals and the proper electrolytes and the proper amino acids. And that's controlled by the bacteria in the stomach in part and controlled by some other features of the stomach and the intestines. Um, and that's one of the areas where Dr. Uh, John Young's shakes are very helpful because... With the digestion? Yeah, because they don't have preservatives in them. So when you go and buy uh, the supplements at the vitamin shops, uh, they'll often have preservatives in them. And while that does get the amino acid or the nutrient into the system in part, it also causes uh, 
damage to the intestines itself and to the bacteria, which then kind of sets up for a new round of problems. Does the electrolytes help the digestion? Yeah, they did help the digestion, yeah. yes. And, and on this program, we're offering, uh, this is a brand new product from Young Health, isn't it? Right. It's quite new. Right. And uh, $22.95, that's, uh, and, and it looks like a bottle of water, but I understand you only use a, uh, a tablespoon. Yeah, you shake it well to get it mixed in, and then you ta a tablespoon. So it, it and will you never put it go in bad. About anything? It'll never go bad because there's no carbon in it. So, so, so uh, you put that in your water, which you've mentioned is yeah, well I, or anything? Yes, anything, anything. Uh, I wouldn't suggest it in coffee or alcohol. Mm -hmm. Do not right. do that. Okay. Uh, when I think of, of all these. Uh, products and I know you so well I get I can get kind of excited because he's got your own little pharmacy there your <laughs> that's how <laughs> it started with <laughs> yeah my that's back, back door with a, a little light over the that's actually desk. how it started when I would go down to their their offices maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago it was really a, a pharmacy most of the office was it, of different supplements and and things being put together and tried out for to see what was the most effective on the on the patients, mm -hmm. and they they learned from the whole process. But it was really the back third of it must have been a pharmacy. It was, it was. <laughs> well, because my yeah. the part the guy so who helped me start was a pharmacist. Yeah, and, and you know it's trial and error, but a natural pharmacy yeah. is what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think you know what Bill's saying. What I'm saying is this: <clears throat> when it comes to health, yes, it's great that we have all these drugs and all of that, but if you take care of the body, if you do some basic things. The body has a tremendous ability to correct itself. And if you put the proper nutrients, minerals, things like that in the body, the body is going to do pretty good. Yeah. Um, Dr. Hammers, for if a viewer has a loved one, maybe they're, they're showing a little bit of sign of, of some slowing down and, and dementia. And, and I don't want to put you on the spot because you're not treating <laughs> them right now. Uh, put a disclaimer or something because you haven't met the viewers. But what are some basic things if, if someone sees this happening? Uh, okay, you would suggest to just switch what they're doing. And well, you know, really, the problem is that by the time you see diseases develop, whether it's Parkinson's or dementia or whatever, the, the process has been going on for 30 years. No so, kidding. Yeah, so you're not really, maybe longer. So you're not really dealing, the way the body works, almost every organ system in the body works this way too, is that it isn't until that organ system gets under 20% functioning that you develop a symptom or of, of some sort of cough, uh, heart pain, chest pain, whatever, some kind of a symptom. It's not until you've lost about 80% of the normal functioning of that organ system before you have any problems at all. Before, maybe before you know it? Before you even know it, yeah. Unless you're like an a, a, uh, Olympic athlete who is measuring their performance in ten thousandths of a second, you won't notice that degradation that occurs, you know, slowly over time mm -hmm. of these different organ systems. So by the time that we see somebody, it's almost by decade, I can tell them where their problems are going to be. And it's wow. essentially when they're in their 40s, there's going to be four systems out of whack, but the others are able to compensate. So if we ad address four different areas, things usually turn out fairly well. By the time they're 50, it's five, 60, it's six. By the time they're 70, it's probably eight or nine. By the time they're 90, it's, it's probably 20 different mm -hmm. systems. Now you can fix these systems. We've, do we've done that on a lot. People have improved them dramatically so that they return to independence in the more severe cases. But um, you have, you've got something that's been going for a long time. So there's not really a cocktail. The second thing that happens, and we saw this with John's work, um, is that as you get people better, the amount of medication that they need is less. Okay, so they, they, but they go through stages of healing and different stages require different therapies, different supplements, different approaches, maybe different doses of vitamin shake or more minerals or less minerals or more magnesium or less vitamin C or more nitroglycerin or more whatever the thing is. But recovery is staged and it, it occurs over time. So there's not really a great answer for you. I can talk in generalities but when you talk about a specific person, whatever I would put that person on today will be the wrong thing in one year, will be the wrong thing in one year. So you have to monitor it. It has to be monitored, right, exactly. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about medication or you're talking about supplements. So the uh, supplements are a little bit different uh, based upon which supplement you're talking about. When you're talking about minerals and that sort of thing, the body is able to use them properly. When you talk about ginkgo, it's a different ballgame. It's more like a medication. Well, he's... Uh, 
you brought one of your patients on one day and on this table loaded with his medications. Mm -hmm. It was quite a visual uh, yeah. shock, really. And he was off of all of those. Right. Uh, he, was, he was one happy camper, and I remember that. And uh, that's something also about Dr. Young's uh, practice is that those medications go down. I think, right. I think you told me you had one with 29 different medications. Now my question, you guys are doctors, okay? Does a doctor say, okay, you're on this, and now I'm gonna give you this, and, and no one sees how they interact? As a layman, I say, know your pharmacist, because <laughs> that pharmacist can maybe tell you how t 29 different medications are gonna interact. Most of these medicines were designed for short-term use, and they're also designed to be used on very young, healthy people with a lot of muscle mass. That's how they were designed. They're applied to people generally who are in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, which they're physiologically completely different individuals than what the medicines were designed for. They have less muscle mass, muscles make hormones, they metabolize medicines differently. They have le less, you know, we talk about supplements, amino acids, proteins, enzyme systems. So we're, we're dealing with medicines that were never designed to be used in the way they are. They're being used chronically and in the wrong kind of patient. We have taken chronic diseases and put an acute treatment on it, but kept it on for years. Right. Yeah. Then you get into trouble. I think it just came out in JAMA, I think it was yesterday, that if you've been on anticholinergics, like- Which is what? Like Benadryl, mm -hmm. very common Yeah, one. people know what that is. For more than three years, your rates of dementia go up by 50%, mm -hmm. because oh it my. affects the brain's chemistry. And that's even true for antidepressants. You know, uh, the antidepressants are, you know, tend to, the common pattern is that you are on it and the heat has to keep on increasing. And what happens with anticholinergics, antidepressants, uh, lots of medicines out there in the body, including a lot of the antihypertensives, is that they cause the body to sort of release more of the medicine or keep more, not medicine, keep more of the chemical that they're trying to replace. They, they cause the body to release more of it acutely or to keep more of it in the system rather than being re reabsorbed. And what happens is that then gets washed out of the system. The body stops responding to the medicines. Boy, there's a lot of Americans on antidepressants. Um, I went through a time when I could have used them. Mm -hmm. But for some reason in that time, and he knows a little bit about it, I got a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I go ride, Smart. and um, I guess the endorphins or whatever, you know, get out of your chair and, and go do something. Our time is going by so quickly with these gentlemen. I could talk to them all day, but I want to remind you, we are offering uh, today Dr. Young's newest uh, product. And what could be simpler than that bottle you're looking at, $22.95. And then um, just a tablespoon of it in, in your drink, your water, or whatever, or even food, uh, whatever, puts back the electrolytes that have disappeared really from yeah. our our whole uh, food supply. And so the number, be sure and get that number on your screen and and order it uh, because um, that's a, looks like a pretty good amount for that price. And um, you've already seen some improvement. Well, well, a lot of testaments. I think anyone with osteoporosis, yeah. I mean, that's just a sign osteoporosis. that- Osteoporosis. Yes, that you, you know, bones are getting less dense, is that that's a sign of you're losing minerals. That's the body sign. The bones store minerals, and now they're losing the minerals. But so is high blood pressure, diabetes, yeah. uh, heart disease, uh, dementia. These are all signs the body is losing fundamental things right. that, that are replaced by your, your I love processes. hearing you guys talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. just that <laughs> Bill and I, we just, we kind of remember the first year of medical school. We yeah. remember yeah. biochemistry and physiology. And when you take that, mm -hmm. you can go quite far. Well, you, uh, you gentlemen have been great teachers, and I've got just one minute. Uh, quickly tell us why your protein, which I take a lot, is better than what you buy in the, in the health store. Because I think that's important. Number one, it's low heat. You can cook the protein to death, and it's useless. Number two, there's no oils in it. You know, you read, you know, sunflower oil, safflower yeah. oil. Once you powderize an oil, you hydrogenate it. That's death to the cell. Number three, we don't have preservatives in it. Preservatives kill the electrical potential of the cell. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remake a cell membrane. Uh, we don't have maltodextrin, which raises insulin levels, which is death 
to neurotransmitters, you name it. And so that, right. and it's a beautiful protein. I, just, I don't know what protein's supposed to look like, but this is just consistent and beautiful. And um, so that is in your Young Power Shake, which we've offered uh, many times. Today we're offering the electrolyte. But gentlemen, promise me you'll come back. This is fun. I can. F I feel like I can just sit back in my chair and you guys talk okay. and we'll we'll listen and learn. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you much. Um, we're out of time right now, but stay with me. I have a couple things to say to you before we say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I'm so often reminded of the scripture, and I know you hear it a lot, uh, from Christian television, and sometimes it is blown way out of proportion. But when the, uh, when the Apostle John wrote, uh, above all, I wish that you would be in health and, and your soul would prosper. Um, soul prosperity is the most important thing. There's no question about that. Because through the ages, there have been those who really uh, had difficult lives like uh, Annie Flint Johnson who wrote so many hymns and Fanny Crosby, major, major problems. But they had soul prosperity, so important. But also he said, I pray above all else that you'd be in health. And so much of that is in our hands. It's up to us if we choose to be healthy. I, I mean, do you ever get out and exercise? Uh, what do you eat it, when you go to the grocery store? Is it all stuff in boxes and so forth? And so that's one thing on the program we try to really highlight and bring to you that hopefully with the things that you learn on Homekeepers, uh, you'll be better able to serve your family and uh, to get in, everybody in that good health that the Apostle John was talking about. So I hope you got a lot out of these two doctors. I know I did. Uh, but we are completely out of time. So friends, join me next time. Remembering there's absolutely no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to uh. www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.